it's Gigi and welcome to another story time video girl. I decided today that I was going to be sharing a story about this guy that I met in Las Vegas and this is nothing like my previous Las Vegas story time video with the sugar daddy situation and all of that and this is actually another video where I have some video documented footage. So the story starts in Los Angeles. I was flying to Vegas for a couple days for work. I had my hair and my makeup done. I was like all cute. I had my little like overnight bag, my little like rolly thing to like put in the overhead compartment. I see this really cute guy. He's kind of like this like young jock kind of looking guy. We kept like making eye contact and I might seem like I'm like really, really like forward and like insane and like I'll like just go up and talk to a guy, which I have done totally in the past if I have a reason. But if it's just like awkward exchanges, I am not gonna go up and talk to you. Like there's absolutely no way you need to make the first move. I'm not just gonna like throw myself out there. Like, what do you think I'm gonna get rejected? Honey. So we finally board the plane and I believe we were on Southwest Airlines and I'm like giving her my boarding pass. She scans it and usually what I'm used to, they give it back to you. She throws it out, literally just throws it out in the garbage. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna need that, <laughs> honey. She was like, oh no, you can sit wherever you want on the plane. I was like, what? Is this some kind of like not safe airline? So I'm sitting and I sit right against the window. He's like walking down the aisle and I'm like dying. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, there he is. Like, is he gonna like come sit beside me? Cause there's like, there's no rules on this plane. He ends up sitting two rows in front of me I'm against the window and all I can see is like his slicked back hair cause he has that kind of like shaved sides slicked long top kind of look which is like so cute so we're like about to take off we're like taxiing or whatever the lights completely turn off on the airplane and i see him get up i was like oh my god so my my heart started beating i was like what is going on right now this is literally what he said to me he goes i have a hard time with takeoff so i get a little bit scared can i sit with you for support i was like oh my god so cute. So I was like, okay, yeah, sure. So he sits right beside me in the middle seat. Ends up he's from Vegas. And for the sake of this story, let's just call him Andrew, okay? By the time I knew it, we were like in Vegas, the hour plane ride flew by and we were landing and he goes, oh, okay, well, what are you doing now? I was like, well, it's like 11 o'clock at night. Probably just gonna go to bed because I have, you know, an early morning on set. And he was like, oh no, don't do that. Let's like chill. I was like, oh, I'm only in Vegas for a couple nights. So like, okay. And he's like, I'm gonna go home and change and drop my stuff off. So I go to the Cosmopolitan and here's another crazy part of this story. They're like, okay, the room is paid for, but you need to give us your credit card just for incidentals in case you break anything. I give it to him and he gives me this weird look and he's like, oh, Gigi, your, your card actually didn't go through. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, what? I know I have money in there. You know what? Try it again. If it goes to the second time declined, now we're going to have issues and I'm going to call my bank and freak out. And then he tells me that you have to wait five minutes to try it again because the system, whatever. So we're just talking for five minutes and he's like, have you stayed here before? I was like, yes, I love it here. He goes, well, let me check while we wait um, if you can get a free upgrade for your room. Literally 30 seconds goes by. He goes, oh yeah, you're on the 60th floor now. You got the free upgrade to our penthouse suites. I was like, are you kidding me? Free upgraded to the 60th floor? How does that exist? I thought I was literally on punked or something. He tries my card again, it goes through. It was literally like fate for me to get this room. So we go up to the 60th floor and there's like a double door. This is one of the bedrooms. Closets are huge. The bathroom is sick. I literally can't. There's like a little makeup place. Ugh. Cosmopolitan really is my favorite. Oh, break the place. And then we have the bar. The living room, the dining room. Like wind chimes. So lo and behold, I get a text from Andrew. I was like about to say his real name. And he's like, hey, what are you doing? Have you checked in yet? And I was like, yes, come over. And I was like trying to keep it super low key just so he like thought that I like lived like that all the time, which I like totally don't. So I meet him downstairs at the bar and we're like talking. We have a few drinks and we were like vibing and like just like laughing and having a good time. And I was just like, I seriously did not think that I was gonna meet you and like be here. By this time it was like 1 a.m. and like the casino was right there. Now is like when it starts picking up in Vegas so there's tons of people. I need to like get out of here or else you know it's gonna be like 5 a.m. by the time I know it. He's like, oh that's no problem but like I'd love to walk you to your room. He was totally understanding. He's like, let's do something tomorrow 100%. You're only here for two more days. I wanna show you more around Vegas. And I was like, girl, I've, I've been around Vegas, but okay. So we go to my room and he's like dying over it. He was like, what the fuck? Like, what are you doing out here? Are you literally seeing the president of the United States? I was like, no, they freely upgraded my room. I was not about to keep that charade up. So whatever, he leaves, we like hug goodbye. I literally had to wake up at like 5 a.m., had a full day on set. I think I was there until like 8 p.m. And I was actually supposed to have two days on set, but I got all my things done on the first day. So I had another free day the next day. So I get home from set, I like shower, I change, I'm like fully glam out again ready to go out and Andrew comes over we're having a glass of champagne in the hotel room and just like talking and stuff and he looked like really really cute he wore like 
this little cute button up and like he just like dressed up kind of for the night. We ended up at Caesars Palace at a nightclub called Omnia and it was super fun. He had a friend's table there. We were there for a little bit and then I had a group of friends that was there actually visiting from Australia and they were super cool about me bringing my guy friend into their table and sharing their alcohol and it was one of their friend's birthdays actually and Vegas tables are not very cheap. They'd actually bought the bottle for themselves so I was like okay well you know we have to be respectful. I don't know most of these people here so like just trying to like keep it cute. I look over Andrew has two other bottles above his head doing shots pouring it in people's mouths I look over and my two Australian friends are like looking at me like who is this guy? Why did you bring him like he's like such an idiot? I was like, oh my god So I go over to Andrew and I was like dude, you need to put these down. It's like too much. You're doing a lot Like can we go back to your friend's table? He's like no, they don't have alcohol left or something So that was like our little argument and it was kind of heated and literally all over me having to just say something because my friends were giving dirty looks, like I couldn't not say anything, you know what I mean? Like, if I didn't say anything, I would feel bad. I saw him talking to this group of girls, and he was just talking to them, it wasn't like he was like making out with them or anything, but I was feeling like a little bit needy, so I got like a little bit jealous, and I basically just told him that I was leaving. I was like, well, you're gonna do your own thing, I'm gonna do my own thing, I'm gonna leave. I wanted like a little bit of attention from him, you know what I mean? Like, shoot me if I wanna be talked to by the guy that I came with. Like. <gasps> Oh my god, is that such a crazy fucking concept? He ends up like chasing me out of the club and I'm just like walking. I was like, listen, go have a good time. I've been up since 5 a.m. And I was pretty much just like writing this guy off in my head. I was like, he's a douchebag. We're literally like on the strip. I'm walking back to the Cosmo. He ends up apologizing to me enough to the point where I'm like, you know what, fine, whatever. But I was like still kind of low-key mad, like just being so over dramatic estrogen that's all I have to say we ended up like going back to my hotel watching a movie and like falling asleep on the couch or something like that I wake up because I hear like motion and it's like bright out it's like the next day he's like not on the couch I was like what where is he did he leave he's like no I have to go to work right now he goes I want to let you know I'm really sorry again and I would love to make it up to you tonight during the day he, te he was texting me saying I have a surprise for you I'm so sorry you know I feel bad about last night and all this stuff and I was just thinking like oh he got tickets to some like DJ concert or he's gonna like take me out to dinner or something like that and I was just like so down I was like well, whatever you know it's my last night here I was totally supposed to be working today but I had the day off so might as well just relax and then chill and then get ready for tonight so the night comes and he's on his way to the hotel and he still doesn't tell me what we're doing and if you know me I hate surprises so much like I just I always want to know what's going on you know what I mean like don't tell me there's a surprise if there's a surprise because then I'm not gonna be able to stop thinking about it but if you just surprise me with something then that's fine so we walk out the building to the parking lot, go to his car. All of a sudden I see that we're driving like off the strip and all of like Las Vegas strip is like behind us. Like all the lights are literally behind us. Now we're going into like the real Las Vegas where people live and like not party. So we pull up to this warehouse, okay? And now I'm really starting to get scared because I was just like, what the hell is going on in this warehouse? Like, how is this my surprise? Like what concert is here? What restaurant is here? Everything I thought was like out the window apparently. He tells me to stay outside in the parking lot. He goes, I'm going to be two minutes. I just need to set something up inside and then you can come in. So I'm waiting outside right now at this random place I was taken to and I have a surprise waiting for me inside. Don't know what's going down. Kind of nervous about it. What is it? Oh. Ready? Yeah. I go in and I walk through the door. It's pitch black and he's like, listen, follow me. Like, you're not going to know where to go. There was like aisles and it looked like desks, like desk jobs, like cubicles and stuff like that. I was like, okay, this is like so bizarre. What's going on? Then the music kept getting louder and louder. And then at the end of the last hall, I see this little bit of light coming from under the door. And I was like, is that like the surprise? Like in that room? <laughs> You know, I wasn't paying attention to you at the club last night. Yes. Because now we have our own little club. <laughs> yeah. So good. I love it. Been a hood like a dumb sweet tea or a Louis Burger. You ain't with the biggest nigga who you murdered. You ain't heard of Dow Chang. That's my girl. Literally, guys, when I say that it was a 20-foot high LED screen, like, literally as if I was at, like, the Ariana Grande concert. He goes, we could put any graphics on it, we could put any music we want on, we can dance, just me and you. I was not expecting him to do something so, like, out of the ordinary, out of the box. Like, he literally, like, made, like, this was, like, one of the best apologies I've ever gotten. So, yeah, that was his idea of an apology. I just thought that that was 
so so nice don't get me wrong this is not the sweetest thing a guy has ever done to me but it's definitely like one of the sweetest things like a new person in my life has ever done for me he was pretty much still like a stranger to me and the fact that he would do that for me was like just really nice I thought and it like really did like sweep me off my feet I was like are you kidding me like all of this for like little old me and like I was overreacting at that and you put all this effort into it and he told me later in the night that he didn't even have to go to work that day and he showed me afterwards he turned like all the lights on he showed me how to take like the whole wall down it was so much work like it was literally like hanging from two cranes there was probably like a hundred little screens that he put together and like stacked and shit it was like insane so yes that was my story time video for today I really hope you guys enjoyed it was a long one I'm like fully out of breath. I feel like I just ran a marathon. But I would love to know what's the sweetest thing just off the top of your head that anyone has done for you that caught you completely out of the blue and you were just like, what the hell? Or even someone just like you just met, like my story. Like I was just like, people are like this? Like what is going on? It's so nice. I felt like I was in like a full on movie. Definitely going to be checking out the comments, but until I see you guys next time, stay gorgeous.